From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon, I'm Diane Parker. Ed has our Thursday forecast, plus much of the recent success worldwide and in indigenous fashion explosion can be traced right back to Montana. But first, our top story. Evacuations are in order as a new 30,000 acre fire sparked in Campbell County, Wyoming, Wednesday afternoon, quickly spreading into Montana. The Campbell County Fire Department says the flames are spreading rapidly. Residents of borderline states are still under evacuation orders at this hour. Multiple resources from both Montana and Wyoming are fighting the fire from the ground and the air and the cause is still under investigation. Two national forest systems in Montana are getting millions of dollars to address wildfire danger and mitigation. MTN's Tom Buchanan reports. Two national forests in Montana will receive more than eight million dollars to expand work in order to confront the wildfire crisis. Well, the first is being able to put people in those areas safely to respond to the fire. Second is minimizing the impacts of any future wildfire to these communities and lands. And then third is to uh, restore health to these landscapes because we have such heavy uh, hazardous fuels in the area right now. Funds will support the Bozeman Collaborative Wildfire Risk Reduction Project on the Custer Gallatin National Forest and the West Zone Heavy Fuels Project on the Helena Lewis and Clark National Forest. The funding comes from the Hazardous Fuels Fund from the Inflation Reduction Act. The funds for the Custer Gallatin National Forest will bolster previous restoration work to treat additional areas of high wildfire risk where national forests and grasslands meet homes and communities, known as the Wildland Urban Interface. Funds for the Helena Lewis and Clark National Forest will reduce the amount of dead and dying trees caused by pine beetle outbreaks. These trees create above average hazardous fuels. $3.3 million will be used in the Helena and Lincoln districts to do this, using machinery and prescribed burning. Kathy Bushnell, Helena District Ranger for the Forest Service, says this money will be used to target key areas such as the 10-mile watershed, which provides water for thousands of people. Those are prioritized because of the critical values, which is the municipal watershed, the private property, and the amount of hazardous fuels in those areas to then um, minimize the threat to those communities and those areas should a wildfire come into the area. Reporting in Helena, Tom Buchanan, MTN News. This is one of those days where there's something going on everywhere across the state and something different. Potential for high snow in the uh, mountain passes across anywhere from Canada down into Idaho tonight heading into tomorrow. Flash flooding with heavy rain possible, especially over burn scar areas of central Montana. And we're picking up some decent accumulations there. For tomorrow, strong gusty winds will cause some problems uh, with the lake wind advisory around Fort Peck. We have elevated fire risk today across especially southeastern Montana into Wyoming, into the Dakotas, and across eastern Montana, the potential for strong to severe storms, damaging winds, large hail up to two inches, even a possible funnel cloud. We'll talk about the forecast coming up. This noon, friends and family are grieving the loss of 28-year-old Julian Wolf. Wolf died Monday night after being struck on his motorcycle by a truck that was fleeing from Yellowstone County Sheriff deputies. MTN's Charlie Kleps has the very latest on this tragic crash. Take a look at how far that intersection is away, probably 20 to 30 yards from where I'm standing. Well, on Monday night, that's where 28-year-old Julian Wolf was initially struck before he ended up here. And on Wednesday, family and friends gathered to mourn his loss. He was genuinely one of the best people that I have ever met. He's a real good dude. I mean, great leader. If you got to know him, you were gravitated to him instantly. The words are endless. Trustworthy, loyal, independent. Very charismatic, very loving, caring person. All describing 28-year-old Julian Wolf, who was struck and killed Monday night by a man in a pickup truck fleeing Yellowstone County Sheriff's deputies. A small memorial has been formed at the crash site. For those that knew him, the pain has been unfathomable. I feel empty. I feel lost. 
I'm sad, I'm angry. Wolf was driving on 4th Avenue North when Jimmy Joe Flanagan ran a stop sign on North 20th Street while being chased by two deputies. Identified Wednesday as Wesley Brutlog and Dylan Council. According to Sheriff Mike Lender, Flanagan collided with Wolf, throwing him from the bike. Wolf was pronounced dead on scene. You know, when someone you love is just gone, that's not really something you could put into words, you know? Linder said Wednesday those deputies were justified in their choice to pursue. We're in law enforcement. It's our job to stop these people. Linder said they leave the decision up to the deputies involved who are supposed to weigh the importance of apprehending a suspect. It's a judgment call. In this case, there was information that this, uh, this person needed to be stopped, and that's why they continued with the pursuit. That policy differs from the Billings police, who employ what they call restrictive pursuit, only chasing a suspect when certain high-value criteria are met. More infuriated with what happened. Wolf's friends and family disagree with the sheriff's department's actions Monday. They should have realized that that was a danger to everybody on the road at that time. They completely wronged my family, completely wronged the public endangering them. It was a truck with a trailer, for Christ's sake. There's not a good explanation to, to try to justify what happened to their loved one. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. And now to the very latest on another pursuit in Billings that caused traffic issues at the Lockwood exit to I-90 Tuesday afternoon. It all started with a suspect ramming police cars. 62-year-old Elvis Lone Elk is now facing multiple felony charges as police say he intentionally rammed a patrol car on Midland Road. They say he then fled, striking several cars along the way. He entered the interstate and failed to stop a second time before police say he sped away. Police finally used a pit maneuver, which slowed him down enough to ram a second patrol car. He is accused of negligent vehicular assault and kidnapping, among other charges. A federal district court judge found a Billings man guilty of multiple crimes involving the sexual assault and molestation of children along with attempted sex trafficking. The verdict issued after a three-day bench trial was 30 years in the making. 58-year-old James Kirby King, formerly of Hayes, Montana, was found guilty for crimes on the Fort Belknap Indian Reservation and in Billings dating back to the 1990s. The government says King was a prolific sex offender who preyed on the most vulnerable and marginalized Native Americans in Montana. He was charged with child molestation crimes against six separate victims for molesting, sexually assaulting, drugging, trafficking, and exploiting them. King faces a maximum of life in prison. The city of Bozeman unveiled its new fire station, too, on the campus of Montana State University this week. The new 13,000 square foot facility will replace the aging fire station, too, on South 19th. The city partnered with the university to lease the land to build the new station a few years ago. Bozeman Fire Chief Josh Waldo and President Wadad Cruzado say that this new fire station will not only serve Montana State's campus, but the rapidly growing South side of Bozeman. Since 1997, Great Falls Public Schools and NeighborWorks Great Falls have teamed up to help give someone the American dream. Now, yesterday, the organizations got together again as ground was broken on the 47th High School House. This year's version is located at 1305 Third Avenue South, right next to last year's High School House. NeighborWorks supplies the lot, arranges the subcontractors, and finances the construction. The school district provides the the class course to high schoolers and gives them hands-on construction experience.